Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix on May 11th, 2014. As always, I, I think a thousand things to talk about. I don't plan things because there's no point in planning things until you really think through things and then often you become almost mainstream with your planning in advance, etc. All the big talk shows do that. All sides of them too do that. They plan their articles for the future so they become regular mainstream sort of thing. Whereas I prefer to be spontaneous and let things just come out as they will. After all, isn't that more natural? Uh, the whole point of being on the air at all is to be kind of natural, I would think. But unfortunately, the medium becomes a message, as, as McLuhan said, and that is so true. The media has its own format, its ways of presenting things. It even has you trained to have music overlays as someone's talking. And you've had that since childhood without thinking, why do you play music while you're trying to say something at the same time? And of course, it's psychological to an extent, too. And even the ads have it, everything has it in it. And so people think, well, to be a hit, they've got to copy the mainstream. And they don't realize the mainstream is simply a method of controlling you all together and to stop you having thoughts off your own. They do this, of course, when they give you uh, videos at school. And I noticed that very early on when they used to use the old uh, projection reels, etc. And they'd show you uh, some poor animals being suffering somewhere. And the music overlay, very ominous and sad, and a woman's voice talking over it in a hypnotic fashion. And that's how emotion is implanted, imprinted, and the event is imprinted in your mind, basically, for life. That's how it's done. So be very, very careful, as I say. If you want to be careful, most folk don't really want to be careful. Uh, they, they, they prefer having someone else control their mind. And Bertrand Russell said on more than one occasion uh, that... Uh, uh, people who won't use their own minds um, uh, frequently die. And he, says, and, some, and he said it in many different ways too. He said uh, some of them prefer it that way. Uh, even if you'd warn them they're going to die through and start using their own minds and start to think, they'd, they'd rather not do it and just die anyway. So you can't really um, help all the people because partly they've been trained, that they've been taken care of by people who come out of special wombs, who you see on television and so on. And uh, and some of them are wish with you all your life. They live till they're about 100 years old as anchor men and women. And, you know, granny or granddad would never lie to you. So you're trained to believe whatever they say. And when any program, and I notice this usually go too, when the big push through the marketing divisions, the ones that really control your mind and how you tick and so on, and do all the surveys on you all the time, it, it, apparently it works when they tell you that so-and-so is the most trusted man in America or or Peter Mansbridge is the most trusted man in Canada, or, or, or CBC News is the most trusted news in the whole country. Things like that. This is pure propaganda uh, without your input whatsoever as to what you actually think of it yourself. They're telling you what to believe. And unfortunately, it, it works. Isn't that sad? Isn't that kind of sad? I've gone on over Bernays' life many times, Edward Bernays, who really is, is, is a misnomer in a sense. He was given a wrong title. He's, he's, given, he's said to be the father, really, the father of modern marketing. But he wasn't at all. He was only one of many people who had learned the arts through previous generations for over thousands of years through people who were merchants at one time who studied the populations, uh, to where to, how to sell things to different populations because... People have different buying habits, cultural habits, etc. So that they always study their target, you see. Ancient techniques, of course. Even find this in, in stories about Buddha, where at one time he had to earn some money, and he came out of his jungle retreats, and being a Brahmin, he knew, he said he knew how, how to understand, how, he, how to sell things to the public. He knew how their minds worked, in other words. And you'll find this with P.T. Barnum as well, the big circus master who pulled fantastic scams and outrageous scams, you would say. And he was a master in promoting himself. That's a technique to use as well. In fact, P.T. Barnum understood perfectly well, which tells you there was definitely a, an operating system of those who knew the arts and sciences of propaganda and marketing and mass con uh, mind control, you might say. Uh, but P.T. Barnum uh, would often sit 
before he went into a, a, a city with his circus acts, etc., he'd sit and he'd write to the editor under different names, uh, letters for himself and many against himself because he said, no news is bad news. It's all good news when they're talking about you. So he would stir up the controversy about himself and folk don't realize they're being fooled by the same guy as he's appearing under different names for Barnum and against Barnum. And everybody got talking about it. Oh, well, that, that person who talked to Bart, he was quite right. I agree with that guy. And this is how simple it is to manage the minds of the public. It's very easy to do. And once you get emotion going up, it's even better. You'll never think clearly and logically when it's an emotive subject, deliberately hyped up. You have to stand back, almost like an alien, <laughs> and observe it all going on. And, and see how it affects peoples and how they respond to things. It's a fantastic art. Governments use it because they all use marketing companies big time. And uh, those who, even though the war makers use it all the time for propaganda purposes, uh, emotive topics are, are great for getting war started. We're going in there to help so-and-so or, 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 or the Iraqis are killing babies in Kuwait and throwing them out of windows and and that was, all, that was all put out at the time, and folk believed it. Standard stuff. World War I, it was the Germans were bayoneting babies with, with, with the big bayonets on the end of their rifles, and that was put out there too. So over and over again, you'll, you'll find that reason is lost. They don't want people to reason through things. They want you to be emotionally involved in something. Always. And, and politics use the same, uh, says, uses the same tactics too, and politicians are very good at that too. Now, since people are taught from childhood to believe television and even debaters on television with this side or that side uh, and, and the topics they use and the way it's delivered, of course, uh, they're trained already to pick sides in any argument. And the arguments are presented to them to, as an argument to get them emotionally involved. You, you can, as I say, you can never keep a clear head if you get emotionally involved about anything. Your memory will go out the window. Uh, facts will go out the window. They'll back up your memory. And, and all you do is start screaming and ranting and say, that's not nice, that's not right, and et cetera, et cetera. It's so easy. So it's a fantastic tool, mind you. And propaganda for war purposes always keeps it simple, very simple. If it gets too complicated, they get caught up in their lies, and then people will get, stand back and say, well, it's, it's, it's more complicated than I thought. And they don't want that. They want you to be immediately in, into the, to the, the melee and taking one side or the other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So easy to do. But I can remember, too, uh, all the newspapers from the so-called so -called left. The left all works for the right, by the way, because they both work for the same masters at the top. But... Uh, and they both end up in the same road at the end with their global governance and an organized society, planned society, etc. And everyone's working for so-called the common good of all as the boys who run it all at the top, the big fascists, uh, really uh, reaping all the harvests of cash and live awfully well off it. It doesn't matter left or right. It's all nonsense. It's a technique of, of ruling is left and right. So anyway... You get these arguments ongoing all the time. Now, the latest one, of course, is so laughable to me uh, about a, a serious subject, but they are laughable the way they're presented to you. Uh, suddenly, the world is, is supposedly concerned about Nigeria. Suddenly, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it just happens, you see. Now, the West has been plundering Africa for centuries for its minerals, gold, and, and its diamonds, etc., etc., so much stuff there. It's like the Congo. The Congo has been at war forever because the West's always stirring them up to get in so that they can get in there and plunder all the uranium for pretty well free. And the same thing is, is happening all across Africa. And the great global plan, of course, for those who, who manage the world and manage all the political parties and so on, uh, the, the global plan was always to bring a, a big, a big a world of united groups in blocks of countries amalgamated together, and Africa was also to be one of them. Mandela talked about it too. So it's still ongoing, of course, and the old technique that the masters used to use was to invade first, you see, like Britain always did, and for, for good reasons, of course, to save the people from themselves. And 
you'd invade places like India, and you would before that you would get them all warring in little tribes against each other. You'd arm different sides, and then you'd 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 get one of the chiefs to to go against another, and you get the war started, etc. Then you'd play it up in the papers, which you also own, you see, and then you give a good reason why you got to go in and stop them from killing each other. And then, of course, the British taxpayer picks up the tab as their armies are all sent over to keep the peace and to amalgamate the countries, put in the British system of law and order. And and then eventually you put in a, a kind of government with a, a, an elected parliament on a British system, which is completely rigged. And and all your bureaucrats are, are part of it, too. They're, they're part of the old brotherhood system. And then once after maybe 50 years, 100 years or, or more, you can withdraw them. And you're guaranteed that everybody who from then on gets into politics in that country is in the pockets of the big bankers who rule from London, England, for instance. That's really the global system. And I've gone through a lot of this in the past, where I've talked about uh, uh, the Cecil Rhodes Society and the, the, the gravitation uh, and the amalgamations of these different groups, all working really from the same central core in London to, to bring in a world-type empire, you see. Not for the English and, and not for Britain, because these guys literally are a... Uh, you'd almost say they're a race apart. You could say that, in fact. But uh, they want to bring in this one globalized system. Marx talked about it, too, of course. Uh, and uh, and here we are. We've got the European Union that's managed to plunder every country that joined it. And <clears throat> the citizens have never been so poor as they are. Now they're all falling apart. They're paying so much in taxes towards this monstrosity of the European Parliament every year. That has more and more plans all the time to take more money off them all to again to bring this global system across the world. Folk forget that Gordon Brown talked at the EU back in 2009 and he talked about Britain and the British system uh, and, and the European system it all being one under this global monstrosity, of course, which he loved because he's in the pay, he's always been in the pocket of the paymasters. And he talked about that this would be a, a, a system for the whole world, a globalized system. He also mentioned, too, just like uh, Lord Alfred Milner did with his group that became the Royal, uh, in, uh, the, 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 the Royal Institute for International Affairs. Uh, he said that uh, the U.S. would join them. It'd be part of, so between the two of them, they'd bring in this globalized system, you see, for the whole planet to follow. So to conquer the rest of the, the world, of course, they've got to create either create things that are really happening or, or lie to the public things that are not happening or definitely exaggerate them too and count on the fact that the public are always kept off keel uh, logically about any particular topic at all. And they also have very little memory as they get overdosed with data every day, not just from internet but from regular news that generally is irrelevant to their lives. So the arts are all there, it's well used, they're always repetitive, same techniques, logic's out the window when emotion comes in, and the big boys can go in with their militaries, etc., set up their system, in come the corporations, and you and they, corp- they plunder the country for a long, long, long time, and you may or may not leave them with this, this new democracy idea uh, that is already subservient to a, a, another group, a world group, which they all... Um, take their oaths to, basically. Because that's how we're run, you see. Now, Nigeria, and folk have forgotten too, that back in 2012 and 13, they talked about AFRICOM. AFRICOM. And so this is African Command, you see. Uh, and the US wants to rule it all and run it all, uh, maybe with Britain too, uh, helping with cash and so on. But they want to run it all on a military kind of scale to bring in the peace, you understand. And AFRICOM already set up in Niger, they set up different drone bases to strike so-called Al-Qaeda targets. Now, everyone who doesn't go along with the agenda of the West's interference now is called Al-Qaeda now anyway, because the folk in the West don't know anything about it really, except what they're told, which is very little, except they're awfully bad. But uh, the excuses they use are the old excuses, emotional things. Oh, 200 odd girls, maybe 300 got kidnapped from schools and so on. And suddenly the Westerners are all agitated. And every, every talk show on AM radio in every city across the planet is talking about it all together. What a coincidence, eh? And getting you all agitated about these girls going missing and maybe being sold off as slaves or something. 
uh, and, and we're all, and this is the prime concern on the planet right now. Not the fact you have no work in your own countries, uh, not the fact you're getting taxed more and more, and your governments have signed more and more free trade deals so they can put corporations, big international corporations, businesses, into these countries they want to invade and plunder them. To help them, you understand. And, and also, uh, you're going down the tubes fast with debt, 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 debt. We're all cap in hand. We're on our knees, actually. Actually, we've got our head on the ground as well. And, and our ears up in the air to the banks. So we all have. We're all debt slaves, of course. But there's always moral things to do, like going and, and, and suddenly becoming really worried about what's happening to girls in Africa. I can remember they used the same propaganda with Iraq. Oh my God, they make them wear a veil. Oh, they make, oh, that's a good enough reason to go and invade in Iraq. All nonsense. It's all not, that wasn't the reasons, no. They, 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 they planned the war in Iraq years and years and years before even Gulf War I. How many of you can remember even that now, eh? But anyway, uh, this is how it's done, folks. Now, the West aborts more children than it gives lives by birth today. We really care about children, don't we? We really, really care, apparently. And we sell body parts all across the world, uh, from, from fetuses and so on. But we really care about children, we say. That's what we say. The, the parents don't mind handing their children over to be brainwashed at an early age to the government. They never mind this at all, never. And generation after generation it goes on. They don't even know what their children are learning. Because they haven't taught quite successfully. The parent's job now is not to interfere, interfere with it. Just raise the child. Just pay for the money for the child. The upkeep of the child. That's what was decided back in the 30s and 40s. Every year, too, in the Western countries, they come up with these studies telling you that more and more children are living in poverty in these countries than ever before. But nope, suddenly it's Nigeria. We've forgotten all about all the scandals that came out from the United Nations are about the United Nations and NATO, its military wing. We forgot all about that, didn't we? Well, when they were running the brothels over in Serbia, Yugoslavia, etc., Bosnia, and uh, that, that all, they even made movies about it too, which weren't well publicized, but they were pretty detailed and accurate, and how they were even smuggling in young girls as prostitutes all across Britain, and whole housing schemes at one point were full of them, and, and it was all racketeering going on. And that went on for years. But nope, suddenly it's, it's, it's the Africans. It's, it's happening in Africa. No one, I think, was charged even with all the prostitution rackets for all the troops, etc. And prostitution gangs where NATO had gone. I don't think anybody was charged at all. And the UN troops as well. But that's how easy it is to, to get folks stirred up about something. And, uh, and they all argue because they're given the points to argue about. And... Uh, and, of course, the rest of the story about AFRICOM is all forgotten. Folk forget, oh, my God, the U.S. wanted to get in there all along. So did Britain, etc., etc. And so did the big corporations, because there's a lot of gas and oil and gold and diamonds and minerals under Africa. They've been saying that for years. It's one of the richest continents in the world. It really is. But it doesn't matter, does it? As I say, logic and memory and reason go out the window uh, when they give you an emotive topic, presented in the right way, of course. And once they're in, it doesn't matter if it's exposed as fraud, uh, they, they've got what they want. They're in there, they're doing what they want. That's what always what, what uh, happens, you see. Sad that, isn't it? Yeah, people would rather, rather die than think, and they frequently do, over and over and over again. Why would the media give you any points of topics at all to argue about when they don't tell you what's happening in your own countries? Haven't you noticed how quiet the news has all gone since the, the Finkelstein bill went through in Australia and the Levinson one went through in Britain and uh, muzzling journalists, etc. Canada obviously did the same thing, but Canada's never told the public much at all. They're, they're more docile in Canada. They're better trained. And... The reason for that, too, is because they're more Commonwealth countries. And the Commonwealth countries, you didn't think you had a nation to start with. They were all newcomers, you see. And uh, you took directions from England. And things were just came down by dec decrees from the top, from England, through Canada, to the public. And it's never really changed. So what Canadian television gives you, apart from all the far-left stuff that they want you to think about, 
is uh, is also, and it's run by the government, don't ever forget that too, but the CBC, for instance, gives you all these different topics, and little rural things that happen in Canada, little quaint things, as though you're some backwards little country or something, and that's what you think about, oh, it's quite nice, and so on, yeah. They never tell you about the quaint little places in Canada, though, where literally, uh, Maurice Strong would be proud, you give more blood to the mosquitoes, and the deer fly, and the horse fly every year than any other creature. They, I don't know why they call them deer fly and horse fly, it's People they love. I know that from experience, believe you me. And you really get anemic. Oh. But anyway, it's apparently it's a very quaint place. And and everybody in the country, uh, through their comedy shows and so on, uh, repairs everything with, with duct tape and things like that. We're all rather simple, you know, buffoons. So uh, this is how it's done. Uh, but I say Canadians are awfully placid about things. In Britain, they give you a little bit more hype. It's always in the same tradition, left wing, right wing, and all that kind of stuff, which is boring, boring. You've, you've had, it, had it your whole life long. And if you can't figure out the left and the right all work together, then there's no hope for you at all. There really is no hope for you whatsoever. The States is no better. The States come up with a fallacy, many fallacies in the U.S. That everybody was free. That, that's a fallacy number one. They also think through Hollywood that most of their ancestors were all cowboys, which isn't true at all. And they have no memory of all the factory towns that went across in the late 1800s, early 1900s, privately owned factory towns by owned by factors, they call them. That's where the factory comes from. And they had all, all the houses were owned by the factor. All the equipment was owned by the factor. You bought your, your food using the factor's credit money, his own token money. So it all went round in a circle back from the factor, from his factor store. And, and, uh, and so your clothing, everything, even the tools you would have to buy yourself to go down the mines. That's the reality of the U.S. And so they find freedom. You ask your friends to define freedom, you get a whole bunch of different answers what freedom is. One woman from New York thought of her, she said she was free because she said she can shop at any time, uh, night, night and day in New York to any store she wants. She can go and shop. Shopping, that was freedom to her. Folk have varied ideas of freedom, what freedom is. But, of course, at the same time, we're given the, the, the propaganda, which is overwhelming in these days, that we're all collectively together on something. And great enterprises were all in it collectively, even if you don't know the names of them or the abbreviations for them. You're all apparently in it together, and you're willing, uh, and you're giving up sacrifice. You're sacrificing willingly all the cash in your, that you're, you're, you're earning for your masters and so on, who live awfully well off this system. I've often wondered about servants. Servants, I thought, always got less money than the average working person, but they don't. They get they get an awful lot more, and perks too, and privileges. They still call themselves servants, eh? It's not something. But getting back to Nigeria, you'll never get the truth from the big boys, what they're after. But it's quite simple to do a search on the internet and get go over previous news, go over the previous news in Africa and what the West wants to do with Africa. And then you'll find the reasons for all the excuses they come out with as to why they must go in. It's nothing to do with them. They don't give a darn about children, folks. Have you figured that out yet? They don't give a darn about children. They don't really give a darn about you, as long as you keep working. They don't give a darn about you, or how you live even. I had bureaucrats come out from Ottawa. Different ones. And one of them told me, and not nastily, not nastily, and not, uh, she wasn't even being arrogant. She was honestly being honest. And she says, I don't know how you people live. You people. If you think there's no class differentiation, go to Ottawa and just mingle with the bureaucrats. But you better disguise yourself because you'll be one of them people, you see. And when, when they know you're talking to one of them people, uh, they're very careful in what they say. But this woman has been awfully, awfully honest. Big, massive pension looking, looking towards her at the end of her, her, her work, her service. And um, great pension plans, great uh, hospital plans. They, they even fly them. Do you know in Canada they fly them to different countries? They get pre 
retirement courses. A pre-retirement course. What's a pre-retirement course? It's, well, you see, they've been brought up in, on the hill. They're always on a hill somewhere, eh? And looking down on all of us. And they mingle all the time with their own kind. Many of them are intergenerational bureaucrats, all intermarried, in fact. And um, the shock, the shock of maybe having to leave the hill, for goodness sake, could cause complete breakdown of their mental faculties. And so they give them pre-training and pre-retirement courses to get them ready for retirement. It can take maybe a year. So do the nothing but about a year of chatting and do a therapist and things and to get them ready to go out into the great world of the unwashed masses uh, where they might meet peasants for the first time in their lives amongst, even if they're in a middle class area, they might meet peasants walking in the street, for instance. What do you say to a peasant? You know, what do you say to, you, to people you, you know haven't got a clue what reality is? And so they prepare them for their life in the great outdoors with unwashed masses. But sometimes, too, if they're under stress, they send them off to places like Thailand. And they get all these massages and stuff, all cheap, probably package deals by the government. But but they get all these different um, sauna pools and massages and yada, yada, yada to help them relax and get their mind in the right kind of frame to, 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 to go back and, and, and eventually accept this awful thing called retirement. Where they have all this time in their hands, but they're also given other little tasks like, you know, you could move into this area here or that area, and we could we'd subsidize your housing. In fact, we might even give it to you for free. And you move into that community, and you, you can start pushing an environmental uh, agenda and put yourself on the board of the council. They've got all these different ways to keep using them, you see, which is awfully lucrative for them, mind you. And they can keep a bit of status that way as well. Can you imagine? You're coming out of the great crown, the crown that dominates everything at the top. And, and you're, once you're out from under that crown there, uh, it's a terrifying thing to be, to be under the open sky, <gasps> amongst the peasantry. And you'll find it quick enough when you start talking to them, by God, how dumbed down they are. They haven't got a clue why things really happen. How do you communicate with them? And the shock to the system... It's like a life sentence. You've been cast out. Even even Lord Bertrand Russell talks about this. And he was a big, big pusher in the global systems that helped control and create the culture that you're now living through, by the way. You have no idea the organizations that were on the go 50, 60 years ago and still on the go today, arranging the future and your realities for all of you, including the way your children are brought up, what they'll get taught, what they'll believe in, sexual promiscuity, all that kind of stuff. It was all decided a long time ago. But Brendan Russell talked about it as well. He said, the brighter ones amongst the children from the ordinary classes had to be selected. So they give you little tests at school and then they give you, maybe uh, um, they'll give you different um, special tests once they've got a few of them you've seen in an area. And then they'll give you scholarships. And you, but you're encouraged, you're given a kind of mentor. It's very Masonic in a sense. They give you a kind of mentor. And uh, I'm talking about Freemasonic. But they, they give you a mentor, who, like a daddy figure, who will encourage you to make the right decisions about your career and life and everything else and to go along with it. Then you put into the great gilded halls of some posh Ivy League place. And, uh, and you're one of them. On condition that you leave all the old ways behind you. Including often contact with your family, by the way. And he said, he said, once they're in to the organization, the big club, you might say, where their careers are guaranteed and they work for you and this system, to, for global systems, etc. Uh, he said, then he said that they'll, they'll, they'll give all, they're all for you. And you can depend on them. You can count on them. And then, of course, you use them. And they'll be so well rewarded financially, etc., that they'll never look back. Now, the ones, the ones who will not go along with that and are the bright, bright children who can see through things are a menace and very dangerous and will have to be eliminated. That's the real world, folks. Easy to eliminate them today, isn't it? You just put them on drugs at school if they ask too many questions. It's not so much too many questions. It's the wrong kind of questions, the ones that are politically incorrect. Children are very curious about things. 
And when they sort of make sense, they'll ask the question, they'll blurt it out uh, until they get an answer. And that's how it's supposed to be. Freedom of the mind? Who's kidding who? That's never been allowed, especially today. It's getting worse all the time. And they're drugged, of course. They get them on the drugs and so on. And then they get them into uh, child advocacy that happens in Scotland and other countries where the government appointee to every child can do little assessments from about two months on to see if they've got any PC and incorrect ideas. Or ask the wrong questions. How can curiosity be a wrong question? Curiosity about anything be a wrong question. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. Now, talking about the bureaucrats who are terrified of having to join even the middle classes and occasionally coming across ordinary folk, uh, about a terrifying idea. But, but when you think about it, that that's how they are. Because the ordinary people are parroting to them in any conversation things that have been given to them to parrot from the news. Whereas the bureaucrats have had a life of having all inside knowledge and gossip, etc., why things are really going on. And, and they realize that it's a shock to them to realize how much the system has worked on the public, too. Think about too outrage. Nobody gets outraged about anything unless you're told to get outraged. We should be outraged about an awful lot of things if we were only told about them, especially told truthfully about them. But what free, free trade really is, who benefits from it, who's paying for it all, which is always you, and uh, where, it's, where its goal uh, happens to be and, and how it's going there. And, and we have no say in it at all whatsoever. Free trade across the world and, and pacts and, uh, are getting signed by presidents and prime ministers uh, and through the World Trade Organization and the IMF and the World Bank and all these other remote institutions which literally could be on other planets for all that general public is, is concerned because we have no say in it whatsoever, you see. And yet we still part this this thing we're told to part, which is democracy. Well, I've got democracy, you know. And that's why we're going to rampage across the world, killing lots of people to give them democracy, you see. Isn't that wonderful? We live in la-la land, so why go along with the nonsense? Why go along with the nonsense? Most folk go along with the nonsense to be accepted by their peer group. They're equally brainwashed. Uh, they don't want to stand out like a sore thumb or be ostracized, like, oh, he's weird, he knows things. Huh. And, and, and this is how it really is. This is how it really is. Uh, the techniques are used on mass today, mass psychology, mass indoctrination through a thousand th- sources, including all your entertainment. They'll get paid to put these things in there. The, so many movies, uh, they've got nothing to do with global warming, will get it in there somehow. And so many other topics too, which I'm, I know you all know, are put in there. They've got nothing to do with the story. They're paid to put them in by the cultural departments of the governments who dish out all the grants. So, you've been brainwashed by a, a thousand different ways that you're completely ignorant of at the time. Nothing has been overlooked. But telling you to get outraged about something that has never occurred to you before, uh, you know you're getting conned. You're, you know you're getting conned. And the things you should be outraged about, you, you say nothing about, because you don't even know how it's happened, how things... You don't even know how, know how your culture got to where it is today. You think it's somehow evolving with some head, like a headless serpent somehow. Of course it's not. It's been guided the whole way. Always. And it has been for an awful long time, especially since they brought in radio, then television, now the internet, the, the combination, the whole lot of them. And entertainment, of course, uh, is, is just perfected today. Very few folk can think outside the box uh, if you want to get responses from them, emotive responses, they're Pavlovian. Just mention certain terms. Just mention them. Just stand back and watch them. Oh, wait, what faces screw up and they are outraged. They're all angry. They can't tell you really why. Except they'll parrot a whole bunch of stuff that they've, they've heard and learned, but never really thought through, you see. It's easy to do. Trained. Trained, you see. We're so well trained and studied by experts all the time, always doing studies, studies, studies uh, all the time. Never, it never ends, all the studies. 
In fact, if anything changed in society that was outside their control, they'd spend billions of your money to find out why you're all doing it or thinking it or talking about it. And they do actually once in a while. Reality is a far cry from anything that's presented to you by your education and by your media and entertainment and so on. Reality is a far cry. The, the enemy, the greatest enemy, that those who rule the world, and the world is certainly ruled, folks, the greatest enemy they have is knowledge and reason. They're terrified of it. They're terrified of people who can hold on to memory and put things together for themselves and use logic and reason. They're terrified of it, absolutely petrified of it. But those who respond emotionally to trigger words and terms and phrases and so on, are that, oh, they're this wonderful, they can do with them as they please, and they can use them as they please, you see. So easy to do. The easiest thing to put out there too, of course, we saw that in the Cold War and many other things before that, is, is to use terror on the public. Oh, something's going to happen. So you need us all the more, which is how government talks to you. We have it under control, but it's going to cost you through taxes for research and development, for weaponry and stuff like that. Greatest scam ever, because it, it works. People do sit back, oh, well, what can they do? They're defending us from those nasty guys over there. It never occurs to them the nasty guys, leaders over there, and cahoots with the nasty leaders you've got too back here. This is how the scams played, you see. Most folk will never figure it out in their lifetime. And that's the saddest thing. The saddest thing, they'll never catch on to why things are the way they are, how they developed and were guided to where they are. Those responsible behind it, all the various institutions, organizations that are like a pyramid structure with all the wasteland below. That's what they show you in the bottom of the pyramids of wasteland, that all the, the weeds grow. That's all of you folks. That's what it means. You see? And of course, they're all seeing eyes at the top. Down below, you're in the darkness. You're in the darkness. And the wise guys, even in your local areas, and your rotary clubs and all your commercial clubs and so on, all belong to the right societies where they're filled in on little bits of, of, the, of the reality so they can personally profit and not tell the rest. We live in a predatory system. Layers of predators at the top who live much, much better than those at the bottom, naturally. And today they have more respectability through propaganda uh, than, than ever before, you see. They're called respectable and respectable business people, etc. Respectable politicians and, and so on. And we believe it. We're taught to believe it. But it's a predatory system. You don't get up in anything to any degree in a society, uh, any high degree, without being a, a cutthroat and a predator, and psychopathic to an extent as well. That's why the most dangerous thing is when groups of businessmen get together to form any kind of association. These uh, leagues or cartels and so on that are formed wield tremendous power, and the wealthier they are naturally, the more money they can donate to politicians, uh, and, and of course in free democratic societies it costs millions and millions of pounds or dollars to get into politics and get up there uh, That's how democratic it is, you know, anybody can become president of course and all that nonsense But anyway, this is how it really is and they're responsible, they're bought and paid for by those who put them in Don't ever forget that That's why nothing changes And the left puts in there, they think they've got their own guy in, in the US and, and of course he's going along with the same agenda as the last bunch who were, who were the, the new conservatives, you see, who weren't conservative at all when you look into the history of it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We're all run by the same group the world over, and the public are completely oblivious to it. And, uh, and because we're like, see, the ordinary people like things to stay the same. Even when it gets bad, you adapted it to all that is bad. 
and high prices and everything. You adapt to it, but please don't make it any worse. That's what you really secretly hope for. And it always does get worse, but you adapt to that too. You always adapt, as Darwin well knew. And um, because of your adaptability, uh, you're guided to wherever the big boys want you to be guided into. But even new, brand new systems. If it's done in the proper fashion, you won't notice how you get into it. You just end up there. And that'll be normal then too. And that's how it's, it's done. Quite simple, isn't it? Quite simple. It's harder to change the occasional individual thinker than it is masses of people who, who don't think for themselves, who want to be the same, actually. And you'll find with groups, too, it's, it's no different than, than all different religions out there. Uh, the, you, you've got to conform to their set of beliefs, and that means everything that they believe in. You accept it, which is irrational for anything in politics or anything else. Because obviously there's something wrong with you if you accept every tenant they have. If you're, if you're an individual free thinker, you say, well, I agree with this and this and this, but not that and that and that. But no, you have to agree with everything that they say and do, you see. So you become us instead of me. You become us. And all of the usies are, are used by, by them at the top. The thems use the usies. <laughs> That's how simple it is. Bernays said it too. He said to, to his big boys, they were sending out to run the whole country in a sense because they do to help presidents to do it. He said that... Um, Rather than create organizations from the grassroots to sell products or to sell your ideas or your political parties, look for established organizations. And they started in the U.S., especially with the churches, because they had big congregations at that time, way back then, and start donating money to them, for instance. Get to know the guys who run them at the top, because organizations are always led by people at the top, you see. And once you have them in your pocket, then they can sway the minds quite simply, gradually, of the massive congregations, and you get what you want. That's how things are done. That's how things are done. Very simple. I mean, even, even a long time ago, for instance, you would have little kings and princedoms and, rather than countries. And it certainly wasn't democratic either. It was generally feudal and, and hereditary. But at least once in a while you had, had big meetings where the folk could voice their concerns. But the folk lived in that area. And all that mattered to them at the time was what happened in our area. You see? But the process now today is to take you away from all that until you really are pretty well ineffective in your area. Who do you complain to? Look at the size of the provinces in Canada, for instance, and the states in, in the U.S. It's sometimes thousands of miles away to get to its headquarters and complain about anything. And now you're trained that you're, you're not just national, so you're getting further away government. You're international. International. Until it's all, it's all ambiguous and, and misty and, and, and over there somewhere. Until the guys that run you are over there somewhere. And in fact, that's how it really is today. You have no say in anything, even locally. Everything's global and introduced from the top down to the local, you see. Including education, your children are being brainwashed with as well. For someone else's agenda. Which they've decided is good enough for you to live collectively and, and serve the masters at the top of the global society. The greater good and all that stuff, you see. Uniformity, uniformity, uniformity is the key. And being simple little creatures, human creatures... We don't like change that much at the bottom. Most folk are not risk takers. They really are not. And they get tied into the traps. They keep them grounded in a certain place, their house, uh, their possessions, things like that, which the big boys count on, actually. They count on that. Because then they can, it's better to have a, a, fixed, a fixed population in an area you can count on They'll pay all the taxes and so on than people who are mobile all the time, you see. You have a, a fixed amount you can always guarantee the income from, and, and that's how they live off you, of course. But you have no say, really, in what happens in your local area. They call it interdependence. You're interdependent, meaning you're completely dependent on everything you need for survival. Your food, often your water, your electric electricity, etc., etc. And these are all being privatized, of course, uh, there were institutions supposedly set up on your behalf with your tax money, most of them, that built infrastructure and the whole system because they were essentials to harmonious living and they're a necessity to life. Not now. They're all being privatized by the big boys who planned this a long time ago. 
who actually gave you socialism, by the way, because socialism was a way to get all your tax money to pay for the infrastructure, for the setting up of the roads, the setting up of the gas supplies, electricity supplies, all these things, you see. They're all, all paid for completely, or at the very least, heavily subsidized. Now they're privatized. And they're going for the whole lot now, as they have you under the thumb. We always pay for the big boys. Corporate welfare is nothing new. It's the biggest welfare system on the planet for them. That's how the world is run, by clever predators. Very clever predators who understand how to pull the strings, how to, how to implement all their con games, and have you diverted off any other topics that, that, uh, that keep you off thinking for yourselves about anything whatsoever. So you're interdependent, meaning totally dependent. And in some places, too, they can't even get a garden put in without permission or a license. I mean, this is slavery par excellence. But should we worry about this? No, we should be worried about women or young girls going missing in Nigeria. That's what they're telling you. Nope. That's your main concern today. And it will be because that's all they'll parrot about. And they'll draw you in. And they'll show you terrible crying people on television and stuff like that. They're going to hit, it's going to hit your emotions and, and everything else is out the window. All your own concerns is out the window. You see? And you're being conned, conned, conned. As more tax money goes off, for more uh, militaries to be sent abroad to conquer the rest of Africa and plunder it as well, and bring it into the same system as you have here, you see. Which is really <laughs> helplessness, isn't it? Because that's what we're being taught. In fact, haven't you noticed, and here's a big, big thing, as I see since Eleven's Inquiry in Britain, they put through the bill in Britain to muzzle journalists for personal opinions here and there, and also the one in Finkelstein for Australia, all the British Commonwealth countries, I'm sure Canada signed it too, and many other countries to boot. Uh, the news is kind of pretty quiet. Everything you get is over there. Oh, it's over there. So people don't even know these places are on the map. That's, what, that's the news they're giving you, you see. Because they're not telling you, that, and they're training you. And it's why I say, by the way, uh, whenever I talk on the air, it's parted the next day by top hosts here and there. But they never mention my name, never, ever. But here, here's what I'm telling you, what's happening. You've been trained under authoritarianism, which is the, the Club of Rome came out with that I've mentioned it before, and their book, The First Global Revolution, and other ones that came out afterwards. They talked about democracy isn't working. And they'd have to train the public to accept the fact they have a form of overlord, you might say. Special people who are specialists and everything. And they run, the world was to be run by specialists, of course. It's a very old idea. It didn't start with the Club of Rome. It's a front mouthpiece for bigger organizations. But that's what the, the keeping the news back from you is all about. You're being trained into this big misty thing up in the heavens somewhere of government and governance is managing the, your world, your personal little world, including your own little, what you think is your piece of it, but of course you have no stake in it at all because you don't own any of it, you have no stakes in anything, uh, you just pay out, you don't get anything back, then, then it's, it's all to do with special people up there, that you shouldn't even be concerned who's running it all, or, or even, it doesn't even matter that you know who they are, most folk don't, but uh, they're training you to, to leave it to specialists. That's authoritarianism, you see. Because eventually they'll do away, eventually they will do away with this nonsense, this, this, this farce of democracy and this pretense of left and right and all the rest of it, you see. That's all to go uh, eventually, is to get abolished down the road. And you'll accept the new way. Oh, the world's just too complicated for all these things anymore. We've got to have experts running it. As I said a hundred odd years ago, actually before a hundred years ago, it's a very, very old idea. But in the meantime, they have to give you the idea of democracy rather than have you having revolutions every four or five years and getting plundered by the guys above you. That's what democracy is, you see. It's a, it's a kind of fail-safe. It keeps you placid. Oh, we'll vote another guy in and we'll get the right person in this time. <sighs> How many lives do you have to live to, to, to figure this one out, see? Eh? Please tell me. But that's how it really is. Conology rules the world. Conology. The art of conning masses of people. Masses of people. 
The whole problem used to be the old adage that said you, you can fool some of the people some of the time, <clears throat> and most people most of the time, but you can't fool, fool all people all of the time. Well, they've almost got that conquered today because with standardized news, standardized education, standardized everything, and repetition from all the media, on all the stations you buzz through if you've got television, you will become standardized with a standardized opinion. You're, so all, most, almost all of the folk are fooled all of the time. That's how perfect it is today. Why do you think so much of your money is going towards studying you? And all these surveys and latest surveys found that X percent uses blah, blah, blah. Why do you think it's all done constantly with your, your tax money getting thrown out to all these universities to do the studies on you over and over again? And the NAC doesn't just listen to everything you do and, and record it all and watch everything you do. It also has its own study groups on the go all the time across the world and gathers all this information because it's so important, you see, of, for control, for, for keeping control over billions of people to bring in their happy worlds for themselves. The, you know, the new utopia where the global elite can come out and they open, you know, the hidden master stuff, all this hidden master stuff. The real elites, the, the intellectual ones at the top can come out and say, yeah, I run this department for the whole planet and, and this is how it is and, and you should accept it, peasants. You see? Folk have no idea how it's done. None at all. The problem is most folk don't want to know. If you try and burst the bubble of the average person, that which makes them feel secure in their own mind in a, in a scary world, they'll turn on you with rage. Be careful what you do and say. Often it's best not to volunteer information. You can do little... Well, you know, you, you dip your toes in the water here and there without going too deep and getting up to your ankle or even further. You can dip your toes. You see, you'll, you'll know right away if the people have the ability or not, or the ones that you're talking to or you're listening to or whatever. Otherwise, don't start it because, by God, if you were, truth is a scary thing to folk. They have a whole reality of fiction. And that, that fiction becomes what they call their id, the whole complete persona of themselves that they hang on to. And if you burst it, they'll, they'll turn on you viciously. If you tell them the truth about the music industry and all the songs of love growing up and they go la 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 and they sing the, the chorus and all that, if you tell them how it all came about and who ran it and so on and why, and oh, vicious. Or who made so-and-so a star? Ah, beware. People love their fallacies. It's the rare individual, very, very rare, who really wants truth. I likened it back in the 90s on the radio when I talked about free falling. If you want truth, it's like jumping out a plane without a parachute. You can't hold on to anything that's preconceived or you thought you knew. Because you have no idea what you're going to learn in a way down. And, it has, and if it's all new to you, you can't fight it and kick it. What is, is. That's what truth is. What is, is, is truth. You see? Most folk can't handle that. They say, well, I like that, but uh, I want you to hang on to this, you see. But you distort the whole truth for them. But from a mental health aspect, because they've never really known what mental health is, except the, the fake culture, the fake everything that's been drummed into them, and the routines they're encouraged to go along with, they'll turn on you if you bust it. So be awfully careful. The old meaning of identity crisis wasn't nothing to do with genders or sexuality. It was to do with what you perceived as the id. It's you and your place in the world and the world and its place to you. Uh, and your whole persona and how you saw yourself fitting into that whole world system. And everything you interact with, that was your healthy id. But when it's completely artificial, you still feel that health aspect because it's familiar to you. You say, that, that's what I believe, and you're happy with that. Someone tries to bust that, you'll, you'll become vicious towards them.
So be awfully, awfully careful, you see, about giving folk truth. Very few folk really want it. Most don't want all of it. And, and most actually can't handle it. That's the sad truth of things. Most can't handle it. We're the most controlled society that's ever existed with the techniques that are used against us. And it's very, very difficult to get truth today and hold truth. And all the organizations pretty well that come out uh, showing you bits of it have a spin for their own particular agendas, unfortunately. And, uh, and you get used again. Anyway, that's a, a Sunday night, and it's just off the top of my head as always, and, and I thought I'd just blurt it out. Because it has to be blurted once in a while, doesn't it? It's not depressing, you see. How can truth ever be depressing? Fantasy, that's why folk dive into fantasy, like, oh, you wouldn't believe it, because it really does distract them into a never-never land of complete fiction, because the world is pretty scary, you say to them. And the scarier it becomes, the more fiction you've noticed that they've dish out to you, the more movies they dish out to you, the more catering they do to segments of fiction for you. Oh, he's a sci-fi channel, he's this channel. Oh, they've got everything for everybody, you see, to make sure you're kept in some kind of fiction for escapism. And even in that escapism, you've been programmed with the updates for the, for the political correctness how you should feel about this topic and that topic and so on and so on and so on. That's how perfect the system is. So if you want truth, start with yourself. Start with yourself. And if anything makes you uncomfortable, any topic, you better ask yourself why you feel uncomfortable about exploring that topic. Why? Who put that into your head? Who made, who gave you this Pavlovian response to feel uncomfortable when you, when you even think about it? Think about why you're getting outraged about things. Who's telling you to get outraged? What do they have to gain? Who profits from all of this? It's quite simple, isn't it? Then tie in your memory. Try and keep memory on things if you can. Stop relying on an internet. Because I'm telling you, they keep changing reality on the internet all the time too. I have to do link checks all the time, awfully time consuming to check up links from all the talks, so many talks I've given in the past, and they're always dropping links. Other articles may have the same link and they've rewritten the darn thing. Because truth goes down the memory hole. That's how fast the past has changed and truth has changed and facts are changed. All the time. All you have is yourself. You're living in a world where pretty well the world now is under complete weather management control. Most folk have adapted to it without reasoning through it. Got little bits in their head they've heard here, heard there, read a little snippet here, bits and bites. And they'll adapt to total climate change as it's totally controlled. NOAA, the organization NOAA for the weather, etc., has been, it's got up every year how global dimming is getting worse and worse. It's not pollution, folks. It's the spraying in the sky. And you, you'll accept that too. You'll accept more and more cloud over certain areas and more and more sun over other areas that are going to get the droughts. Because now the, the, the food's up on the futures market for the biggest boys on the planet, the big agribusiness companies. And they can actually bet who's going to have the droughts this year and who's going to have a good crop this year. And they can juggle all the prices in advance, etc., etc., when it's a sure bet, you see. That's how the world is run. And people adapt. Anyway, don't get outraged over things that you're being told to be outraged about. When your world is perfect around you, then maybe think about it. But until then, forget it. Forget it. And don't be a hypocrite. And don't pretend whatever country you're living in is somehow better than all of that that you're seeing to be outraged about. 
Look at your own history, recent history, even present. And tell me how perfect you are. Because if you get outraged by anything you're told to be by the media, you're getting used. From Hamish myself, Ontario, Canada, it's good night. May your God or your gods go with you. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix on May the 11th, 2014. As always, I, I think a thousand things to talk about. I don't plan things because there's no point in planning things until you really think through things and then often you become almost mainstream with your planning in advance, etc. All the big talk shows do that. All sides of them too do that. They plan their articles for the future so they become regular mainstream sort of thing. Whereas I prefer to be spontaneous and let things just come out as they will. After all, isn't that more natural? Uh, the whole point of being on the air at all is to be kind of natural, I would think. But unfortunately, the medium becomes a message, as, as McLuhan said, and that is so true. The media has its own format, its ways of presenting things. It even has you trained to have music overlays as someone's talking. And you've had that since childhood without thinking, why do you play music while you're trying to say something at the same time? And of course, it's psychological to an extent, too. And even the ads have it, everything has it in it. And so people think, well, to be a hit, they've got to copy the mainstream. And they don't realize the mainstream is simply a method of controlling you all together and to stop you having thoughts of your own. They do this, of course, when they give you uh, videos at school. And I noticed that very early on when they used to use the old uh, projection reels, etc. And they'd show you uh, some poor animals being suffering somewhere. And the music overlay, very ominous and sad, and a woman's voice talking over it in a hypnotic fashion. And that's how emotion is implanted, imprinted, and the event is imprinted in your mind, basically, for life. That's how it's done. So be very, very careful, as I say. If you want to be careful, most folk don't really want to be careful. Uh, they, they, they prefer having someone else control their mind. And Bertrand Russell said on more than one occasion uh, that... Uh, uh, people who won't use their own minds um, uh, frequently die. And he, says, and, some, and he said it in many different ways too. He said uh, some of them prefer it that way. Uh, even if you'd warn them they're going to die through and start using their own minds and start to think, they'd, they'd rather not do it and just die anyway. So you can't really um, help all the people because partly they've been trained, that they've been taken care of by people who come out of special wombs, who you see on television and so on. And uh, and some of them are wish with you all your life. They live till they're about 100 years old as anchor men and women. And, you know, granny or granddad would never lie to you. So you're trained to believe whatever they say. And when any program, and I noticed this years ago too, when the big push through the marketing divisions, the ones that really control your mind and how you tick and so on, and do all the surveys on you all the time, it, it, apparently it works when they tell you that so-and-so is the most trusted man in America or or Peter Mansbridge is the most trusted man in Canada, or, or, or CBC News is the most trusted news in the whole country. Things like that. This is pure propaganda uh, without your input whatsoever as to what you actually think of it yourself. They're telling you what to believe. And unfortunately, it, it works. Isn't that sad? Isn't that kind of sad? I've gone on over Bernays' life many times, Edward Bernays, who really is, is, is a misnomer in a sense. He was given a wrong title. He's, he's, given, uh, he's said to be the father, really, the father of modern marketing. But he wasn't at all. He was only one of many people who had learned the arts through previous generations for over thousands of years through people who were merchants at one time who studied the populations, uh, to where to, how to sell things to different populations because... People have different buying habits, cultural habits, etc. So they, by the way, because they both work for the same masters at the top. But, uh, and they both end up in the same road at the end with their global governance and an organized society, planned society, etc. And everyone's working for so-called the common good of all as the boys who run it all at the top. The big fascists uh, really uh, reaping all the harvests of cash and live awfully well off it. Doesn't matter left or right, it's all nonsense. It's a technique. Of, of ruling is left and right. So anyway, you get these arguments ongoing all the time. Now, the latest one, of course, is, is so laughable to me. 
uh, about a, a serious subject, but they are laughable the way they're presented to you. Uh, suddenly the world is, is supposedly concerned about Nigeria. Suddenly, all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it just happens, you see. Now the West has been plundering Africa for centuries, for its minerals, gold, and, and its diamonds, etc., etc., so much stuff there. It's like the Congo. The Congo has been at war forever because the West's always stirring them up to get in so that they can get in there and plunder all the uranium for pretty well free. And the same thing is, is happening all across Africa. And the great global plan, of course, for those who, who manage the world and manage all the political parties and so on, uh, the, the global plan was always to bring a, a big, a big a world of united groups in blocks of countries amalgamated together and Africa was also to be one of them Mandela talked about it too so it's still ongoing of course and the old technique that the masters used to use was to invade first you see like Britain always did and for for good reasons of course to save the people from themselves and you'd invade places like India and you would before that you would get them all warring in little tribes against each other you'd arm different sides and then you'd 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 get one of the chiefs to to go against another and you'd get the wall of time for propaganda purposes uh, emotive topics are, are great for getting war started we're going in there to help so and so or or, or or the Iraqis are killing babies in Kuwait and throwing them out of windows and and that was all that was all put out at the time and folk believed it standard stuff World War One it was the Germans were bayoneting babies with with the, with the big bayonets on the end of their rifles and that was put out there too so over and over again you you find that reason is lost they don't want people to reason through things they want you to be emotionally involved in something always. And, and politics uses the same uh, says, uses the same tactics too, and politicians are very good at that too. Now, since people are taught from childhood to believe television and even debaters on television with this side or that side, uh, and, and the topics they use and the way it's delivered, of course, uh, they're trained already to pick sides in any argument, and the arguments are presented to them to, as an argument. To get them emotionally involved, you, you can, as I say, you can never keep a clear head if you get emotionally involved about anything. Your memory will go out the window. Uh, facts will go out the window. They'll back up your memory, and and all you do is start screaming and ranting and say that's not nice, that's not right, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's so easy. So it's a fantastic tool, mind you. And propaganda for war purposes always keeps it simple, very simple. If it gets too complicated, they get caught up in their lies, and then people will get stand back and say, well, it's, it's, it's more complicated than I thought. And they don't want that. They want you to be immediately in, into the, to the, the melee and taking one side or the other, etc., etc. So easy to do. But I can remember, too, uh, all the newspapers from the so-called, so-called left. The left all works for the right. They always study their target, you see. Ancient techniques, of course. Even find this in, in stories about Buddha, where at one time he had to earn some money, and he came out of his jungle retreats. And being a Brahmin, he knew. I said he knew how, how to understand how he, how to sell things to the public. He knew how their minds worked, in other words. And you'll find this with P. T. Barnum as well, the big circus master, who pulled fantastic scams and outrageous scams, you would say. And he was a master in promoting himself. That's a technique they use as well. In fact, P.T. Barnum understood perfectly well, which tells you there was definitely an operating system of those who knew the arts and sciences of propaganda and marketing and mass uh, mind control, you might say. Uh, But P.T. Barnum uh, would often sit, before he went into a, a, a city, with his circus acts, etc., he'd sit and he'd write to the editor under different names, uh, letters for himself and many against himself, because he said, no news is bad news, it's all good news when they're talking about you. So he would stir up the controversy about himself, and folk don't realize they're being fooled by the same guy, as he's appearing under different names for Barnum and against Barnum. 
and everybody got talking about it. Oh, well, well, that, that person who talked with Bart, he was quite right. I agree with that guy. And this is how simple it is to manage the minds of the public. It's very easy to do. And once you get emotion going up, it's even better. You'll never think clearly and logically when it's an emotive subject, deliberately hyped up. You have to stand back, almost like an alien, <laughs> and observe it all going on. And, and see how it affects peoples and how they respond to things. It's a fantastic art. Governments use it because they all use marketing companies big time. And those who, even the, the war makers, use it all.